you are welcome to yet another episode of LFN What's Your Say? The number one listening show where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring R. Kelly. Real name Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. While R. Kelly was faced with multiple charges in New York last year including the unexpected such as kidnapping, there are confessions made by some parents themselves, where they agree to giving their daughter's blessings to be with him. Sister, she was like, yeah, mom, come on. So she's trying to convince me, but it's my only daughter. I'm trying to give her my blessing. Mm -hmm. So I did, again. For a man who was accused of kidnapping, coercing and assaulting women, To later learn that parents such as Michelle Kramer were involved makes us develop even more doubts whether the government really did prove their allegations against him, or if the Brooklyn court conviction was just another free gift to the prosecution like the Chicago one. It turns out all supposed R. Kelly survivors have in the past years enjoyed celebrity status, showing up on media interviews, TV shows and others selling books carrying the valuable name R. Kelly. Friends to the media as they have been lately, in their search for fame, They have revealed a lot of information which can clearly show anyone critical that R. Kelly was nowhere close to the predator that was being described. And that he wasn't really guilty of all the counts that were described in court and that he was eventually charged for. For example, there is no way to accuse him of kidnap, when the parents themselves confess to have given blessings to their daughters to be with him. Maybe we can say that it didn't turn out the way they had hopped but turning around and suggesting that he kidnapped their daughters is in a way going over the line. Meanwhile, what kind of parent does this? If you insist that your child was 17, and also confess to have blessed her being with R. Kelly, you are probably at more fault than the R. Kelly you blame. Remember you as a parent are well aware of your child's age, but R. Kelly doesn't even know when your daughter was born. And truth be told, It may be difficult for a person to tell between a 17 and 18 year old. Considering some of the women confessed to have lied to R. Kelly that they were of age, and yet with their parents' guidance, they now claim they were 17. I mean, how was he supposed to know? Remember when you are out to date a woman, you will not be asking them to present to you their birth certificate before you can accept them over for a party or anything of the sort. You will likely go by what they tell you and what your eyes say. R. Kelly should not be judged as though he is different from other human beings just because he is a big-time celebrity. Being a celebrity does not give a man special senses to detect age through the eyes by simply looking at someone. We must admit it can get difficult to tell the difference between a 17 and 18-year-old. Michelle Kramer said her daughter became 18 only a few months after spending time with R. Kelly. Meaning she was at her transition stage to 18. That's if her mother's story is even true. Well if she knew her age and still gave her a blessing to go be with him, how can we rule out that it was not all a setup to blackmail Robert? A setup so that she could later go on the Windy Live show and say, R. Kelly kidnapped my daughter. A setup so that they could now press R. Kelly for exorbitant restitutions like they are currently doing in partnership with Brooklyn federal judge Ann Donnelly. Or even just so they get famous enough to sell out books in millions of copies. Why should it be that everyone else should gain financially, while R. Kelly loses both financially and socially? Why should the court and society be quick at excusing the mistakes of the mother who took her own daughter to an adult-only show illegally, and probably had to lie to the security officials at the gate that she was 18, but find it easy to convict R. Kelly for his part of the mistake, a man who knew nothing about the woman that came to him? This is where it gets really confusing. It looks like R. Kelly is only guilty because he is R. Kelly and not Michelle Kramer. It's also quite disturbing the way the show was introduced to the audience, suggesting that Michelle's daughter had been held against her will, and later to reveal in the course of the discussion that she actually voluntarily moved to R. Kelly's place, after falling in love with him at one of his shows where the mother had taken her with no invite from Kelly himself. So you wake up on a wonderful Saturday morning and you make your own independent decision to take your underage daughter to what is supposed to be a show for adults only. And you expect if R. Kelly later hears from her that she was at his show with her own mother, he is supposed to imagine she is not yet 18. Is he a magician? Why exactly do they expect R. Kelly to act superhuman and know what he has not been told? Putting opinions aside, 
This analysis proves R. Kelly is indeed innocent of the alleged kidnap charges in Brooklyn court, for which he was fraudulently found guilty. And it's not only kidnap that he was falsely accused of. We intend to challenge the New York miscarriage of justice count by count. Another very interesting thing to note about Michelle Kramer's story, is how she conveniently makes it appear as though it was only until the daughter was 18, that she decided they can be together with R. Kelly. Making herself look innocent, while making R. Kelly look guilty. She more or less tried to tell us, I kept hunting after my daughter, calling R. Kelly and telling him to stay the F away from her. Until she was 18 and I said okay, I now give you my blessing go be with him if you want to. Well her life must be as accurate as the moon orbits the earth. In real life, things just don't happen like this. It's always mistake after mistake on either sides. No one is genius enough to follow the law as accurately, especially when it comes to matters of kids and relationships. This is what R. Kelly meant when he said he had been lied on and the world did not believe him. The people involved just weren't telling the stories as they are. Everyone was twisting a bit and adding a tweak here and there to protect themselves while throwing R. Kelly under the bus. Another part of this video I found quite interesting is when she says, as parents, make sure your kids know your number off head. So that we may think, oh my god. She was a great parent. She made sure her daughter knew her number off head, and now she is advising us to do the same just to make sure we don't also lose our daughters to people like R. Kelly. She was probably lost of good deeds to describe herself with, and needed to cling on to that to make sure we hear her. Why she has not yet been indicted, we are yet to find out. If the government's interest was really protecting the young women, such a parent, along with the likes of Sparkle and Andrea Kelly would have already been subpoenaed. But because the primary objective of the prosecution is to deliver a service to big corporations like Sony which want R. Kelly out of the picture, their job is to partner with such lawbreakers, grant them immunity to lie and make sure R. Kelly gets the longest sentence possible. The case against R. Kelly will be remembered in history as one of the biggest schemes to defraud a big-time celebrity, where parents, associates, and women teamed up to make R. Kelly pay for the time they were with him. The time they were spending his money, eating his food, wearing his shopping, driving cars he bought them, selling out books with his name tag, and leaving his own children to suffocate while they siphoned his wealth to the core. In the process serving the master they never knew. Sony Music Records which has a history of exploiting artists all around the world, later rewarding them with lawsuits after making billions of dollars from them. The same company that is suspected to have hired the doctor that gave Michael Jackson his last dose of medicine. Well, they think we don't know. Anyway God knows. All we know is when any of their artists decides to make claims, for some reasons they begin to get entangled in strangely unique legal matters which we have always failed to comprehend. And phenomenally, if they don't die, they go to prison for a very long time. If you wish to take part in a live interview discussing any of these topics, let us know by sending an email to sashalfnmedia at gmail.com for scheduling. Thank you for watching today's video, a production of LFN Media, giving you another perspective of issues at hand. We make it our business to keep you updated with the truth amidst the cloud of lies the media wants you to believe. It is therefore important to subscribe to this channel, hit the bell icon and allow all notifications so that you don't miss out whenever we publish a new video.